everyone, I'm Alex and I'm the founder of Travel Sisters. We're a female-only travel community and usually we'd empower you to travel safely together by using our app. But lockdown kind of sucks. So here's our special coronavirus travel interview series. I will be interviewing some interesting and fun travel sisters from our community living across the whole world. And if you want to join and have a travel chat with me as well, then make sure to join our group and let us know. Hi Emma, uh, thank you so much for joining hi. me on this call. Uh, how about you start with introducing yourself briefly, where are you in lockdown and how is your country dealing with it? Okay, um, my name is Emma. I live in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, we're not on lockdown. It's a bit of a controversial situation going on over here. Um, you can read all about that in the media. I'm not going to get into it, but we're not on lockdown. I, however, am self-isolating because I feel that, that is the right choice. And I don't necessarily agree with what our government has said. So I'm just sort of sitting at home. I think I'm on week eight now. So it's been a long time for me <laughs> trying my best. Interesting decisions across so many different countries, but yeah. Yeah, it really is. And, and they vary a lot, especially Sweden, of course, at the moment. But um, um, it's sort of, it's so strange being here because you don't feel like you have any connection to the rest of the world, really. There's no solidarity with the rest of the world, seeing as everything here is so different. Mm. I was watching this, uh, there was a big music, did you see that on... Um, I think it was CBS or something. A lot of musicians were mm -hmm. sending live from their homes and they were showing pictures from all over the world and all the streets are completely empty. And, you know, you saw pictures of Paris and no one's there. And I was sitting here, I'm like, you know what? In Stockholm, people are, they're out partying right now. And you just don't feel like you're part of the world. And it's, it's really strange. And I don't, I don't like it, but you know, what can you do? I can't, I can't really leave either because that wouldn't be responsible. So I'm stuck here until the lockdown, my yeah. lockdown is over. <laughs> okay. Well, um, then let's get to the fun questions. Um, yes, this wasn't please. for lockdown. What are your three yeah. fa favorite places or things to do in your area in Stockholm? Ooh, uh, my answer is about to be very spontaneous. Let's see. Uh, if you if you like history, I would recommend going to the town where I grew up, actually, uh, called Sigtuna. It is about an hour outside of Stockholm, north of Stockholm, and it was actually the first capital of Sweden. So it's got a lot mm -hmm. of Viking history, a lot of rune stones, a lot of um, old, really old runes, like churches and... Um, old cafes from the 17th century that are still cafes today, which wow. is pretty cool. Yeah, and one of my favorite cafes is called Tante Brun, which translates to like Aunt, Auntie Brown. Mm -hmm. It's this little lady that dresses in brown all the time. So all the, you know who Elsa Beskov is? She's a writer. She okay. was a writer from, from uh, long ago. She wrote the story about all these little ladies and a lot of, Sigtuna, uh, the cafes and, and uh, restaurants are based off of the characters from her stories. Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of like a little scene if you want to read about that before coming here. I also recommend um, the beach walk in Sigtuna. It's just a really nice little, little town. Probably pretty boring if you're not interested in history, but it's very, very pretty and um, cozy. So I would do that. You could do that like during a whole day it's not much of a nightlife yeah. so for the nightlife I would definitely go back to Stockholm <laughs> and uh, go to my favorite bar which is an old town and I think it's in like the main square of old town and it's called Farmarium it used to be an old pharmacy so all of the drinks are themed after like little like old-timey medicine bottles and stuff. It's really, really cool. Yeah, and the menu constantly changes, and it's so much fun. Like, the drinks will be on fire or smoky or... Yeah, and there's always a new theme going on. I love that place. Um, so that's an idea. Yeah, I, I've been there at least 20 times, probably. 
It's great. What else? That was two. I need a third. Um, probably head to Uppsala. That's a town close to Stockholm. Also about an hour outside of Stockholm with a train. It's, uh, it's a university town now, but it's a very old uh, town in Sweden too. And they have a really beautiful big castle. And I think the biggest and oldest church in Sweden is there. Mm-hmm. Very beautiful. One of our most known kings, Gustav Vasa, is buried there. His grave is really big and cool. And uh, if you're into that, a bit morbid maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, Uppsala is a very, very cute town or city. I think it's only it's in the middle of a town in a city. It's not that big, but it's a little bit bigger than, than Sigtuna at least. But yeah, that place is super pretty too. Most people miss it because they just sort of stay in Stockholm. Mm. But it's not far to go there at all. And it's more, it's more what Sweden probably looks like outside of Stockholm. Um, mm-hmm. And every city probably looks sort of like that. But Uppsala is a great example of just like your, your average cute little Swedish city, which I think is nice. What mm-hmm. are your top three places that you have traveled to? Ooh. That was so hard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, let's go back in time. I loved San Francisco when I was there. Mm-hmm. It was very cold though. I went there in June, which was apparently a mistake because of the June gloom I found out about. Mm-hmm. But it's a beautiful city. It's amazing. And it just it doesn't look like the rest of uh, the U.S. It looks so different from the rest of the U.S. And I loved that. So definitely San Francisco. And while we're there, you can go to L.A. if you want to, because it's a four-hour drive, I think, which I did. So that was a nice little thing to do. And I also have family there. So, But you don't have to have family there to have fun. Actually, it's probably more fun if you don't have family there. <laughs> <laughs> Because you can't get away with doing anything when you have family around. Um, let's see. My second favorite place, uh, Marrakesh, was amazing. I loved it. Loved it so much. I was there for a whole week with my sister about two years ago. And we also went to the mountains, the Atlas Mountains, which is right next to the city, mm-hmm. for a hike one day. Beautiful. Absolutely amazing. Highly recommend that. Marrakesh is just... It's like being inside of Aladdin. It's amazing. It's so cool. (laughs) I shopped a lot. I bought a lot of just random little knickknacks and things and pillowcases and carpets and oh my God. (laughs) Amazing. And then let's see, number three. Mm, Malta. Malta is beautiful. And it's very small, which is nice. You don't have to be there for that long to see most of it. I was there for only about three days, I think, and I saw saw a lot during those three days. It's a, uh, it's really cute. It looks like it looks like time sort of stood still there for a while. Mm-hmm. It's really really adorable, and during the during the night they just light up all of the buildings and it just looks like oh, wow. gold. Yeah, it's beautiful. It sounds lovely. So those would be my three favorite places that I that I've been. I think so far. So far, a lot more to come. So if money didn't I hope matter, so. <laughs> where would you go next after lockdown? Uh, probably some kind of adventure trip. I mm-hmm. would love to go to the Amazon, which sounds crazy, but I won't really want to go on one of those steamboats through the Amazon, nice. which is, yeah, I think it's about, about two weeks. I looked into it before. Sounds so amazing. I'm allergic to mosquitoes, though, which would be a problem, but... <laughs> I'll just have to bring a lot of mosquito repellent spray or something. I don't know. <laughs> but I would love to do that. I even joked around with my sister the other day that if I ever get married, I would want to do that on my honeymoon. So okay. very strange honeymoon. But you know what? I'm here for the adventure. Sounds great. <laughs> And so would your top travel tip be have a mosquito repellent on you or <laughs> what's your top travel tip? If you're going to the Amazon, I'd probably bring one of those. But um, otherwise, I don't know. I think 
um, just go with the flow. Don't plan too much. Mm -hmm. Um, make sure to leave space for being spontaneous and also try to make the actual traveling bearable because what's difficult for me is the flying and Mm -hmm. the sitting on trains you know the destination is always amazing but the getting there can be a drag so I always turn my flight into like a mini spa for myself I just bring like little face masks and I sit there with like my sheep masks and people look at me like I'm crazy but I'm like you know what I'm doing myself just don't bother me (laughs) (laughs) let me be with my little sheep mask and um yeah so no shame no shame in that treat yourself I'll try to to follow your advice on that because I think I'm a bit too self-conscious in that one. I'm not sure I would be just sitting there with a face mask. <laughs> After the first that. time, the first time it feels a little weird. But once you once you break the ice and just like go for it, you don't care anymore. And it's so amazing because the air is so dry on airplanes too. You need that. I'm not yeah. trying to age. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly working. <laughs> I don't know about that, but. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much for your tips and also the travel inspiration. It's been lovely talking to you and um, I hope you can lift your own self-isolation ban soon and um, get to the Amazon. (laughs) Yes, it sounds amazing. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye.